Hey YouTube, I'm back. So I took a day trip to New York this past Saturday and I got to stop in a couple of stores. Um, I made it my mission to stop by a couple independent bookstores since I actually work at one. So I thought it was important to support other independent bookstores and see how other ones are set up, what books they have, and yeah, stuff like that. So this haul is going to be the books that I got from New York and a couple um, stationary items that I got. Um, I originally got a list from MuseMonthly.com, so they have a blog, and um, the owner of Muse Monthly made a list of eight independent bookstores sto in Manhattan. Some are in East Manhattan, some are in West. So we were in West Manhattan, and I tried to stumble across those and purchase something from two of them. I ended up going to two of them. I really was trying to go to one, but I will tell you why I ended up in two. Okay, so I will start with the stationery first, and then I will talk about the books I got. All right, so my first stop was Muji, and I wasn't planning to go to Muji, but on our way to... Um, I think I was trying to go to Makeup Forever first or whatever. And um, on our way, there was this girl with this Muji bag. And I was like, oh my God, there's a Muji here. So I have to go. I had to go. And um, I thought they were only in Japan for some reason, even though I know it's a Japanese store. But um, so we hunted it down and I got some things. So first thing I got was these pack of gel pens. Let's hold it up closer. Um, there's 12 in a pack and they come in various colors. They're 0.5 if any of you care about the um, size of the tip of your pen. I know I do only because I bullet journal and sometimes like writing smaller um, in like your spreads and stuff actually helps. And the, the size, of, I didn't think it would actually make a difference about the size of the tip of your pen, but it actually, it really does make a difference. So those are what I got. I'm really excited. And I, I'm somebody who really loves stationery. So I was excited to go into Muji. I didn't know they also um, sold clothes and other items like that. But um, yeah, I didn't look at those. I was just looking at the pens and journals and sticky notes. Alright, so my next... I'll do the pens first. And my next one... Oh, and this is cute how they wrapped it up. So I got two little individual pens. Well, actually three. I'm already using one. So they're just these little black pins. Um, I'll show you how they come. Hopefully this is the right. Yes. And um, this one's .38. And I got it so I can, you know, write even more precise in certain areas. And I think I just kind of like this pen in general. I was using it and I, I like the way my handwriting kind of looks when using this pen. So. Um, I think these were like a dollar fifty. I can't really remember. And these were twelve dollars, which isn't bad because um, that means these were a dollar per pen, which it's not a bad. Um, I don't think it's a bad price because pens can get expensive. Oh. All right, and for my last two items are notebooks, journals, whatever you want to call them. So I got this one and it's just a plain journal and what i did like about their uh store i was just too concerned about getting to everywhere i wanted to go they had like a big huge stamp set um near their stationery um section and you could stamp the front of whatever you bought um they asked of course if you purchase the item first and then go back and stamp it but um I, I do wish I had did that, but maybe next time, or maybe I can just get my own stamps and do it. But yes, so I got this one, and I it has blank pages on the inside, um, and I don't know what size this is. I think this might be like an A5 size notebook. Um, it just says note on the back, and here are some more details. Um, yeah, I paid, I think I paid $7 for this. I didn't see this on their website, though. I was looking at their website a little bit last night, and I didn't see this on their stationery section. So, um, I don't know if it varies from store to store or what, but yes. So, then I, this is my last purchase from Muji. Um, 
It's a notebook. I'm holding it the wrong way. For some reason, this tag is on the front. This one and it's on the back of this one. Either way, this one is a, yep, this one says A5. So I guess this one isn't A5 then. This is how they square up to each other. Um, so this is an A5 notebook that's a grid. It's a dot grid. And I got this to use as a bullet journal. So when I'm finished with my uh, um, Luchi Kerm, I forgot what it's called. But anyways, um, once I'm finished with the current journal I'm already using, I'm going to switch over to this one. I didn't think about it today, but um, I mean, when I bought this, but I realized this doesn't really have like the, con of course, doesn't have like a cable of contents like the, my previous journal has. So I'm definitely going to have to make more things in this journal to kind of compensate for what it doesn't have. But yeah, I'm excited about these items. I think even if you keep it plain, it's cute. And I cannot wait to be a nerd and write these bad boys. All right, so the reason everybody is mostly here, the books, the books I bought from New York. So before I go into the books that I actually bought, um, and uh, Mike ended up getting me two books for my birthday, which I really appreciated. We got on the bus and um, we were talking for a little bit before the bus pulled off and I was like distracted eating a bagel and all of a sudden he's like happy birthday I got these for you and so he um, was looking at my Goodreads and saw things that I want to read and these two were on it so the first book is The Absolute True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie I'm sure a lot of people know about this book it's a band on the band book list um, it's a really popular YA novel about a Native American teenage boy and I'm excited to read this one. It's been on my Goodreads for a while. I didn't um, start doing Goodreads again until I got on YouTube doing books. I had started a Goodreads maybe back in 2013-2014 and completely forgot about it and it's so funny because I was actually going to take these books off my want to read list because I wanted to keep it current to what I actually had in my possession of books that I haven't read that I want to read but comes to, to find out that he used these you know my list to find these for my birthday and I really appreciate it um and then the thing around your neck by Chimamanda, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and these this is her sh collection of short stories and um a co-worker of mine says she liked these and was, I was talking about them earlier this week which is funny that it's in the in my possession by the end of this week. I don't know. It's just it was just great how life worked out. Um, I thanks again to thanks again to Mike. Um, I really appreciate these gifts, and I wasn't expecting them. I was really surprised. He invited me on his trip, and then he actually you know got me something. Um, and I wasn't expecting that. Okay, moving on. So the first bookstore I ended up going to was Books of Wonder. And I do not remember the address quite offhand, but I will leave all those links below so you can find these stores and where they're located. So basically I had this list of eight bookstores. I'm not familiar with New York too much, so I just wrote them down to take with me and I we Googled Matt kind of what were the closest to us or whatever. And um, so I stopped in Books of Wonder, but Upon my arrival, I realized it was only a children's bookstore, which isn't a bad thing. It was actually a really great store for kids. And um, if you love YA, that is definitely the store for you. They had tons of middle grade and young adult novels. They had a beautiful like back wall full of them. Um, they had classics. They had, um, they had a wall based on hardbacks and paperbacks and I was actually a little jealous that they had the paperback version of Shadow Shaper because I think I would have preferred that rather than the hardcover even though I like the hardcover it's just when you're carrying your books around I realize now that paperback is like much easier just towed around even though hardback stays a little bit more protected so I'm um, talk about books of wonder yes yeah. all right so since it was an independent bookstore and I trekked Mike all the way there because I mean he likes books but not like me so this was my idea 
I felt like I needed to buy something anyway. So I was like, hey, let me just look at their YA section. There are some YA books that I have on my list that I wanted to get. Um, I couldn't find uh, A Cot of Witch, and that's what I was originally looking for. But I did run into this. All American Boys is which is one that I want to read. So it's about um, two teenage boys. Um, one is white, I think one is black. Let me just read some of the synopsis. Rashad is absent again today. That's the sidewalk graffiti that started it all. Well, no, actually a lady tripping over Rashad at the store making him drop a bag of chips was what started it all. Because it didn't matter what Rashad said next, that it was an accident, that he wasn't stealing, the cop just kept pounding him over and over, pummeling him into the pavement. So then Rashad, an ROTC kid with mad art skills, was absent again and again, stuck in a hospital room. Why? Because it looked like he was stealing and he was a black kid in baggy clothes. So he must have been stealing. And that's how it started. All right, so. This looks like it's going to be a story about, um, you know, to, t a teenage boy struggle with uh, police brutality. Um, I'm not going to read the whole synopsis. Eventually, when I read it, I'll talk about it more. But um, most people are familiar with this book, and um, it is the Maryland Humanities Board. Um, they're like a nonprofit in the state of Maryland. I live in Maryland, but um, in my, I have a friend who works for them. They picked this as their book of the year for the state of Maryland to read. So they're doing a couple events around this book with the authors and like discussions. So I'm really glad I picked this up. Um, and apparently Jason Reynolds has more books out the, as the um, clerk was telling me about it. And so there was also, um, while I was looking around, there was also this wall that had what I like to call secret books. They didn't really have a name for it. But secret books in the sense of, or surprise books, that where there are wraps in this paper and it has a description on it. So, and they were also separated by age group, which is good. So, you know, for parents who want to make sure it's appropriate for their child, it started at, I think, 10 and up. So, yes, this says contemporary fiction, 24 hours, Australia, mysterious artists, true love question mark lyrical and beautiful for fans of molina marchetta gail foreman and nicola yoon and when i saw nicola yoon's name that's what made me pick it up because i want um i want to read her next novel oh it's, it has something to, to do with um a star oh i'm blanking but i will write i will annotate what the name of that book is. I don't think it comes out until November, but I've seen a couple people with some advanced reader copies and it sounds like a good book. So I'm gonna read it. Um, and I already did open this, um, but I kind of rewrapped it for this video. And it is a book called Graffiti Moon. And it says, senior year is over and Lucy has the perfect way to celebrate. Tonight she's going to find Shadow, the mysterious graffiti artist, whose work appears all over the city. Somewhere in the glassy darkness, he's out there spraying colors, spraying birds and blue sky on the night. And Lucy knows that a guy who paints like Shadow is someone she could fall for, really fall for. The last person Lucy wants to spend this night with is Ed, the guy she's managed to avoid since punching him in the nose on the most awkward date of her life. But when Ed tells Lucy he knows where to find Shadow, the two of them are suddenly on an all night search to place where shadows piece of heartbreak and escape echo off the city walls and what lucy can't see is the one thing that's right before her eyes so is this a book i would actually pick up on my own absolutely not but i mean it was nine bucks it was fun to actually um you know be surprised by what i was getting however i did notice that the isbn is on the back the isbn number will ring up the book as the book title on your receipt. So if you go in there and you pick up one of these books, do not look, do not read your receipt. Um, if you have to sign for your credit card, do not look over the receipt. Um, and maybe you should just pay cash instead. 
Uh, so, yes, I noticed when I was going through the bag earlier this morning, it had the title of the book on there. Luckily, I didn't notice it until after I opened this up. But, yes, I mean, if you have a kid, that's not going to be an issue. But if you're getting it for yourself, don't look at your receipt until after you open it and you're surprised. Okay, so, yeah. And what happened, and also, I guess they have, I don't know exactly how these rewards work. They gave me two Books of Wonder dollars. These give you $2 off a book um, at their store or $1, $1 off how many ever you have. And um, I'm thinking about just putting these in the scrapbook. So um, yes, that is Book of Wonder. They were awesome. Um, if you have kids, take your kids there. Oh, and they had a, um, they had like a glass um, section that was like a glassed off bookcase it was pretty big too I wonder if it was like first editions of certain books I think that's what it was um like they had a couple they had like a copy of Catching Fire and some other things I just remember Catching Fire was in there I think they had like a couple first editions of some books or something special is locked behind those cat those glass cabinets so if you're interested in maybe those I think you might it's you should definitely if you're in the New York area or you plan to you should definitely check out um, them I wish I had uh, thought about asking more questions while I was in there but I really didn't want to keep Mike in there longer than necessary all right so my next book place since this was only children's books I had to find a bookstore that had adult books or literary fiction whatever you would like to call it and I stum stumbled stumbled upon Three Lives and Company. And I should probably stop saying stumbled because I planned to go to one of these. And this was actually the bookstore that um, on Muse Monthly, um, they had mentioned that it only had adult books, which is so funny because then I went the children's books and not only adult books. So this one's in Greenwich, Greenwich, I'm sorry, Greenwich Village. And um, it's like on a little corner. And it was so cute. It was small, but it was it was fully loaded of books. You will not find journals. You will not find bookmarks. You won't find pens. You will not find um, reading lights. Any of those little knickknacky things that sometimes you like to pick up in a, a bookstore. I don't even. They might have had coloring books, but I didn't even really. I wasn't looking for them to be honest and I don't want the ones I saw I only thought it was I only saw a few of them there were no colored pencils like my store has a crap ton of colored pencils for our coloring books but yeah I was totally excited to go in there so I had a bit of a hard time trying to figure out what to get from the store um, not because they had a bad selection they had a great selection but I have a whole list of books that I want to get for my birthday and um, I'm mainly going to buy them from my store just because I get a good discount on books. And it's really hard to pay full price for books when you know the difference in the cost that the people who like anything in America. You know there's a difference between what the store buys things from for versus what they actually sell it for, you know, the markups. And so Mike was like, you should buy things that aren't in your store, which was a great idea because I had already looked up. Um, certain books and saw which of the locations that um, had the book certain books in stock and which ones didn't so the first book which is actually in my store one of my stores but I thought would be cool to pick up in New York was perfume um, so this is by Patrick Sunskind and this is about a guy in 18th century France who is trying to create the perfect scented perfume which ends up leading to him murdering a few people to get that scent created so I'm really excited to read this um, I will I've got this book suggestion from a youtuber uh, I do not remember her name so yes I'm excited to read this I don't usually read um, thrillers or mysteries or anything dealing with kind of like psychopaths or uh, killers I don't know however you want to um, talk about these type of books so I was actually really excited to pick this up which is it sounds bad but then again uh, it's fiction Amen. so let's keep going my next one uh, 
and I need to look up the name of this YouTuber as well um, who gave me the suggestion. It's called The Collector by John Fowles and we didn't have this one in our store at the moment. So it's from the 60s and it, it says it's the first of its kind of like a modern psychological thriller. Um, pretty much like a stalker book. Um, this guy is stalking this woman who pretty much gets obsessed with her so he kidnaps her. I don't know if he actually kills her but we'll see. Um, so yes, I'm excited to read this one. And the girl I got it from, she's a pretty popular booktuber. I'll link her video down below and I will annotate her name in the video. My last but not least, um, this one wasn't originally on my birthday book list. <laughs> Yeah, I do have one of those. And um, I thought about it at like the last minute while I was in the store because I had some other books that I were go was going to get, but they were actually already in my store. So there was no point in me getting them there. So I have picked up, we need to talk about Kevin. So I have watched this, vi this movie on Netflix already, but I had heard about the book prior to like years ago. So I finally picked up the book, you guys. I'm really excited to read this. It's told through the eyes of a mother whose son um, committed like a mass murder in his uh, high school, um, so similar to like a Columbine situation, but I don't think it exactly plays out like, of course, kind of like unfortunately how uh, Columbine did. But she's kind of going back thinking about um, you know how she didn't even actually want to be a mother um her relationship with kevin of course and how that kind of how either she thinks or or doesn't think that affected um his choice in doing uh, in murdering his classmates and a couple other people in the school so yes i am excited to read this as sad and um, terrifying as it may be so that is my book new york book haul i am going to do my makeup haul later um i do need to run out and get to work soon so i will update my goodreads most likely before this video goes up please leave a comment and tell me what you think about the books and the stationery i brought um from new york and please let me know if you go to any of these stores um i didn't tell them my name or uh, mention I had a YouTube but um yeah I just told them I like their stores and I was really excited to be there and buy from them and hopefully you can go and show that same enthusiasm all right until next time bye